Well, welcome, and I'm Harold with Papa Bear's Peppers. And today, I wanna to talk to you about a new pH meter. I know a lot of us out there, we, we talk about pH and wanna do pH, and is our pH meter accurate? And do I gotta do the three point? I know I got a lot of questions, and I know I've gotten a lot of feedback from my previous video on calibrating your pH meter with the three-point method and a lot of them do that well recently I saw one and I had to get it and I'll tell you why simplicity speed and accuracy and what I'm talking about is the Apera SX610 and I'll tell you what folks the best investment I've made as far as pH meters now I know there's a lot of them out there that are you know, 15 bucks or what, you know, 10 bucks, $15, and you can get pH strips. I mean, none of that's wrong. But what I'm talking about is something with a quality certificate that shows that it has been certified accurate. Now, the great part about this is, this is a one point calibration. This is the easiest pH meter I've ever used. Yes, there is a lot of them out there, a lot more expensive, but you know what? I'm just like you and I have to pay for what I'm using and this thing makes sense to me. One point calibration, I can be done in less than 15 seconds. This meter will be calibrated. If I do have any issues, the probe is replaceable and it does carry a warranty for workmanship and the craftsmanship of the meter for up to two years, folks. A, its price point is great. A very good middle of the road meter that is accurate. Apera is a trusted name. B, simplicity of use, folks. One button, that's all it has for calibration, for turning it on, for everything. One button and accuracy. I can pH this meter in less than 15 seconds. So what I have here is I have some distilled water. This is what a pair recommends that you clean their instruments with. So every time you're gonna use it, just re rinse it in there, get it nice and clean, shake off the excess distilled water. You may ask why distilled water? Why not any other water? because you're wanting to use a 7.0 neutral water to clean it with. That's what you always want to clean these with. That is their recommendation. So why do I do it? Because that's what they recommend. Now also included in here is the 7.0 pH solution, two batteries, and a and the soaking solution. So what those do is if your probe dries out, they recommend that you use the soaking solution to rehydrate it. So use this for when you want to rehydrate the probe if you've inadvertently left it out overnight. You put it in a couple drops of the soaking solution to lubricate it again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the single 7.0 solution. Now, I went ahead and I messaged the para and I talked to the engineer and I asked him, how does that work? How can I have one point versus three point and how is that accurate? And he said, when the meter is properly calibrated and working properly, it will give a 4.0 to 10.1 accuracy within its parameter limits. So you're within 0.02 of that limit even when you only do a single point calibration. I'm gonna go right now from beginning to end on how I calibrate my Apera SX610. So again, I've rinsed it off in distilled water as recommended by Apera. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on and I'm just going to dip it in and now I'm going to hit and hold and it's gonna go into calibration and it'll say in, and it's calibrated. Folks, I'm done. I'm done calibrating. How awesome is that, that you can calibrate in that short of a time? Now I'm gonna do it again, because I want you to see it from beginning to end. So again, all I need to do, you can see right now it's on that. I need to put it in the solution, just like so, and I'm just gonna hold, 
and it says calibrate 7.0 end hopefully you've seen that let's try it one more time calibrate I have release it flashes 7.0 it recognizes and says in it's calibrated that's it well folks it doesn't get any easier than that does it it took me less than 15 seconds and I calibrated my meter yes this is the SX 610 from a para a great meter it's compact you could carry it anywhere where accuracy is important but we still we're not scientists, we're not professionals, but we do want accuracy in what we're seeing. Now you may ask yourself, you know, why do I need to worry about pH? When we're dealing with our seedlings, and a lot of times when we're doing super hots, we're starting them inside. Now, my tap water or my commercial water that that we have that comes into the house that goes up to 8384 most peppers are tolerable between the range between 57 and 68 so you get outside of that range even on the alkalinity side you can do just as much as having acidic water or that low pH so here's a little diagram and I want to show you just so you understand what the optimal pH is for nutrient uptake by your plants from the soil. Let's take a look at it. As you see here on this scale, most of our nutrients and micronutrients are available to the plant's root system through the soil, that sweet spot, 6.5 to 6.8. Well, as you can see, there is a sweet spot for your nutrients. And if you're trying to grow those perfect super hot peppers you're trying to grow the biggest that you can the best that you can you have to watch the pH because if you don't you can do a nutrient lockout on your plants and it doesn't matter how much you give them if the soil pH is way off it's going to block those great nutrients that you have from getting to the plant I'm gonna put a link in the description for this the Apera SX610 it's a great little pH meter easy to use you can use it for all your applications okay well this is Harold with Papa Bear's Peppers have a great day and keep growing